Welcome to the group chat 2020. We all Woo-hoo. flew here in flying cars. Uh, at least that's what I thought would be here by the time it was 2020 when I was a kid. I mean, Aladdin just came out, so it could have been flying carpet. I don't know. It could have been a flying carpet. Well, anyways, we're so glad that you're here. I've got Andrew and Tabitha, and we're talking about what everyone talks at, uh, about at the beginning of the year, and it's our New Year's resolutions and how bad we've blown our resolutions in the past and what it's going to take to keep some real resolutions. So, uh, guys, have you ever made, like, ridiculous resolutions in the past? I, I have. Uh, let me just get out there. I was in a room full of people, <laughs> and they were like, okay, what's your resolution for this year? And I said, uh, I'm going to read 52 books this year, a book per week. Um, that was actually last year. <laughs> 2019. It's ambitious, man. Yeah, it was ambitious. And I didn't read 52 books, just to be clear. How many did you read? <laughs> I knew somebody was going to ask. It's like five or something like that. Man, honestly, do I get to count the books of the Bible as individual no, books? No, no. no there's 66 books We're in the Bible, We're talking about original man. books, not like ones that you <laughs> have read already. Um, honestly, I think I knocked out five <laughs> So I got like 10%. Okay. I know. It's terrible. Listen, resolutions are hard. So so say a 100 next year and you might read 10. Is that what's a ratio going to be? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll say 100 next year. <laughs> for 2020, for 2021, I'm going to do 100 and see if I can get 10. I think I can do it, but uh, I, I couldn't do it in 2019. I had an issue. So what about you guys? Have you ever had a resolution that you, you set for yourself that you just couldn't keep? Well, I feel like I make the same one every year and it never... I don't keep it. And it's, you know, I'm going to go to the gym like at least four or five times a week. Like, isn't that the most probably typical That's what one? I was gonna I'm going to either eat better or I'm going to go to the gym and, you know, drop 20 pounds and gain 10 in muscle, like that kind of thing. That and was gonna be mine. it's, it's really, you know, ambitious. And for most, I'm hoping it's for most. It doesn't happen. And for me, it doesn't happen. Oh, okay, yeah. Let's just be real. How many of us have a gym membership right now? Okay, two out of three of us have a gym membership. Like that. <laughs> so no, this is this is really what's on the spot. How often, Tabitha, are you and I making it to the gym? How many times did you make it to the gym this last year? Oh, this last year. Well, I feel like I have a really good excuse because you know I gave birth and I'm pregnant <laughs> oh, again. That's so true. That's true. That's a great I feel excuse. like I have a good excuse, you <laughs> that's know. A great but excuse. I still do. I have gone some with I, even being pregnant. I refuse to go to the gym in honor of your pregnancy. Oh, okay. Yeah, wow. sympathy. <laughs> yeah, sympathy. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I was like to have this pregnant man. It would be unfair if oh. I went to the gym. Mm-hmm. Uh, isn't that great of me? That is so kind. Well, we bought the elliptical. <laughs> we actually bought elliptical from someone, and I have a set of uh, dumbbells mm-hmm. in the garage. I have a jump rope, all this other stuff. And I just walk through the garage, and I look at it, and I'm like, <laughs> I wave at it and keep on walking. So, I heard ellipticals make great um, clothes hangers. <laughs> they do. And treadmills, yeah. too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the handlebars on them. Yeah. yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, yeah. weight loss, exercise. What about you, Andrew? Was there anything that you've set out as a goal? That you just like wow. Man, I mean, the, one of them bad one was going back to school. Like I, I dropped out of college when I was twenty. Mm-hmm. Had about two years in, and I was like, I said, man, I'm gonna go back to school eventually. I'm gonna finish it. I probably applied for like four colleges mm-hmm. in the course of like two to three years, and then I finally did it, and I got in trouble for it because I didn't tell my wife. I just applied for it. And I said, oh baby, uh, next week I start classes. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> yeah, that was. That was a little. She said, "I'm glad you started, but I wish you'd have told me." <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, it was bad. So it's important to communicate your ambitious goals. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So unless they're over ambitious like mine. Well, okay. So listen, we got to let go of the past, guys. In order to grab our future, we got to let go of last year and the previous year. So, what are some resolutions you have for 2020? Have you said any? Are you are are you in the camp that says no resolutions? No, because I feel like that's not a very ambitious life. And a new year is just, I think, really symbolic of a semi-fresh start. Yeah. So I think it, it is good to have them. Mm-hmm. So mine for this year will probably still be to get in the gym more mm-hmm. and eat better. Yeah. And and have more of a consistent um, devotional time, getting up early, going to bed yeah. and at a decent time so I can get up early to have a good morning devotion time. Yeah. 
What about you, Andrew? I, I definitely the the physical fitness one's definitely always on the top. Yeah. Um, I've also gotten to accountability with a couple of people, you mm-hmm. included, on mm-hmm. on that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've called me out a few times already. <laughs> so, Andrew, <laughs> did you do? Love. It, it, it is, is in love, love, and I appreciate it. Uh, but the, actually, the reading more, mm-hmm. that's going to be a big one, and that takes, like, I've deleted, like, game apps off my phone, yeah. like, ten times, the same one. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll put it back on there, and I'll be like, oh, I'm not, it's taking away time. Delete. Mm-hmm. Um, limiting time on TV, you know, it's trying to actually focus more on family and, and be intentional with my developing my kids, discipling my kids. Yeah. So, oh, that's a great one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Taking the time to disciple your family, disciple your kids. Okay, guys, I'm going to throw it down the gauntlet again, man. I'm going to do, I'm going to do 52 books. I'm going to do a book a week. Okay. And, on, and now it, now it's public information. Yeah. Everyone. January 2020. It, today is the day. It Nick is. Cabin's I'm already behind. 52 books. I'm already behind. So yeah. 52 books. <laughs> Do you have a library card? Uh, I have a library card, okay. but I also have a I have a library. I have a habit of buying a bunch of books. Like I have enough books to sustain me. I think for three or four years. Oh, okay. I'm just continual reading because my wife's so a reading machine. So you're going to start the Nick Cavanis Public Library? Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on over to the house. Uh, it's like one of those donation boxes. Take one, leave <laughs> yes. one. Yeah. yeah, just come over to the house. We'll get everything squared away. So, guys, let's be real. What's it going to take for us to get this going? Like this last week, we talked about the real reason why we can't handle sustainable change is not because we don't have the skills, we don't have the material, we don't have the time. It all comes down to who we are, our character, that our our thoughts, our words, and our actions are just out of alignment. So this year, what are some ways that we can take steps to really engage with what we commit to do. You know, things that are going to benefit our life. Obviously, working out, losing weight, eating right, um, you know, spending time with our kids, discipling, uh, reading way too many books. I'm going to do it, though, 52. So what are some steps that we can take, practical steps, to help each other out and, and to help some people out who want to, to, to bring about the change in their life that they want for this year? I think Andrew hit the nail on the head when he said he had accountability. Mm. I think that is one of the biggest keys to success with things like this is having somebody who will keep you accountable that you know you can be honest with and, Mm -hmm. you know, not feel like you have to stretch the truth any, but to tell them, yep, I was great this week and I went to the gym four times or... (laughs) Nope, I chose to sit at home and watch TV, and I did not go to the gym this week. So having that accountability, I think, is a huge, very important thing to have when it comes to continuing your resolutions and being successful in them. Yeah, for sure. So what does accountability look like? I mean, I've heard heard my entire time that I've been in church, you need to be in an accountable relationship. You need to be accountable. So what does that even look like, honestly? Giving somebody permission to call you out. I mean, Uh it's... (laughs) <laughs> you can say, oh, I'm accountable, I'm accountable. But when somebody tells you something, you get offended and hurt and you're, mm-hmm. you don't want to talk to them for a week. And mm-hmm. no, but actually saying, hey, I, you got me. I, I'm wrong. And I, try to help me do better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, but laying out your, being transparent and saying, hey, this is what I want to do. Yeah. And say, hey, can you help me in these areas? For sure. You know, um, if somebody reads a book with you, you know, yeah. uh, or somebody goes to the gym with you, say, hey, don't just keep me accountable, but can you walk this with me? Mm-hmm. Find somebody that'll that'll walk it with you. That's the big thing about accountability. So what what steps did you guys take in finding that accountable relationship? Because when, when I'm, li- I'm, I'm hearing you say transparency, need to be real, need to be open, how did you guys engage with a relationship like that where you could trust somebody to not only be open to, but then that they could speak into your life whenever you're not doing what you say, when you don't have the character to sustain the change in your life. How'd you, how'd you, how'd you develop that relationship with someone? A relationship like that is, is time. It's an investment. You don't, you can't just, you know, point and pick somebody out of the crowd and say, I want you to hold you to hold me accountable. It's, Mm -hmm. it's someone that you have to, um, typically someone that you may look up to, or Mm -hmm. maybe like a mentor, or it can be a close friend, but someone Mm -hmm. who you you have a relationship with and Mm -hmm. who, you know, will be honest with you, but that it takes time to build those kinds of relationships. And, um, you know, for both parties, not just one side or the other, um, but finding that kind of the time, the investment, and 
and it will reap benefits in many ways. And that could be one of them is having that person be accountability for you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So mentor, uh, friend, uh, just someone in your life that, okay. So let's say I'm, I'm looking for this accountable relationship. How, how, what's my part? What part do I play? You said be transparent and open, but accountability from what you're saying is almost two way. It's like a two way street. So what part do I play in that? You have to know about that person. Mm -hmm. Like you have to have taken active interest in that person, not just what am I getting out of this relationship, but so say I learn about Tabitha, the the things she likes, dislikes, Mm -hmm. or the things that trip her up and I'd be willing to, it's just like any other relationship. You have to, value that person to that point where you're going to take an active interest in learning who they are. Mm -hmm. If you don't value them and just looking for what can I get out of the relationship, Mm -hmm. then again, it's transactional or it's one sided and they're not going to invest in it either. You're the, if you're the only one investing in it, then, or they're the only one investing in it. It's not a mutual thing. So it needs to be mutual and it's, it's not a place to just dish like just, Oh, I can't believe so and so did this to me, and then oh, I can't believe it. it instead, this is a place where we need other people in our life to help us bring about the sustainable change, and that's what resolution is about. That's what life change is about, mm-hmm. right? I mean, is actual change that we can sustain. I've done the crash diets, and they last how long? A week, mm-hmm. two weeks. You know, it, there has to be a way to. Um, you know, make it feasible for us to make the changes that we need. And I think what you're saying, accountability is an incredible way to take that on. You know, scripture tells us that the first thing that God gave man was his image. And I I think the best description of his image is in Deuteronomy 6, 4, where it says, Oh, hero Israel, the Lord, your God is one. And being one in thought, one in word and one in action is really the foundation for character. So have you ever have you ever found yourself in life where you were trying to be just more than one person? Maybe you were being, you know, this changed person for one group of people, but then you have a, a secondary life for a different group. Has that ever been something you've experienced? Yeah, I would say high school was that. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I, I went to a private high school and mm-hmm. it was... You know, I did what it took to fit in. Mm-hmm. I never really was part of the crowd. I always had a love for God, but I would cover that and hide it mm-hmm. because I didn't think that would be accepted by the people that, that I hung out with yeah. or that I thought I needed their acceptance. So I just kind of did one thing, and then, you know, I was like, God, help me, help me, and then I just doing whatever I wanted whatever, with my friends. Yeah, for sure. For me, um, when I also, with high school, I can say, use that as an example, but also um, within my marriage, when I was first married, acting one way at church and then a not nice person at home when and with closed doors. So I knew that was something that I needed to change. So yeah. seeking out someone to be a mentor to me and also mm-hmm. um, counseling just to um, to get the tools and the, the help and, again, the accountability to, to making that kind of change so that I wasn't two different people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's like the definition of schizophrenia. I know I personally have, you know, like I said, in my work life, behaved one way on the job site and then another way. And, in, you, know, you know what happens whenever a bunch of dudes get around each other and start cutting up. Some, nobody's there to draw the line. So uh, I think uh, just to encourage anyone out there today, maybe you're new to your relationship with Jesus, or maybe um, there's these goals that you've set out for your life for this year. You want to sustain them. Well, get into an accountable relationship, a relationship with real people that you can trust. You can find that in a life group. And we have them here at CT Pasadena. Life group season's kicking off in February. So just stay tuned. 
Get ready to get plugged in. It's going to help you be the person that you want to be. Be sure to like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram and switch over to Spotify and check out the rest of this podcast where we're going to continue to talk about the way that God has given us the ability to sustain the life change that we desire. And uh, you can find our sermon series on Spotify. Uh, So check it out. Thanks so much for tuning in to the group chat.